Hey everyone, today's episode is with my friend, Sean Wells. Sean has been on the show before, but I had to have him back because I wanted to talk about his latest book, which is amazing. It's called The Energy Formula, um, Six Life-Changing Ingredients to Unleash Your Limitless Potential. Now, I love what it says up top. It is so true. It says the secrets only a biochemist, dietitian, and certified sports nutritionist could know. To me, Sean is like, he is my trusted resource in the biz. Like when I want the real straight story of what's actually happening in the body on a biochemical level, Sean is my guy. I'm I'm grateful to call him a friend. Um, This book, The Energy Formula, um, is number one in seven categories on Amazon, including anti-aging and medicine and psychology. It's on Forbes top 21 books to read in 2021. It's number nine on there. And USA Today um, also listed it as the top 20 books to optimize your life in 2021. It is an amazing resource. Source. It has full color pages, everything you could ever want to know about life optimization, biohacking. It's in here. It's so, so great. Let me give you a little background about Sean um, in case you didn't hear him last time on my show. So Sean has held the titles of director of research and development for Dimatize Nutrition. You may recognize huge, huge companies, um, chief scientific officer for Biotrust Nutrition. Um, he's the co-founder of the popular patent ingredients, Teacrine and, and Dynamine, which are in hundreds of supplements. He has a lot of patents on formulations. He really understands the body and biochemistry at a deep level. Um, he also serves on the journal, Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition editorial board, and he's co-written a chapter on creatine in the most recent ISSN textbook, um, Sports Nutrition and Performance Enhancing Supplements. Um, if you go to any metabolic health, keto, biohacking events, you've probably heard Sean speak. He's very popular. Um, and I love Sean's, I feel like everything Sean delivers, he takes the most complex concepts of what's deeply happening in the body. And he wraps it up in this bundle of common sense and is like, what actually makes sense? What can we do? What is needed? So in this episode, we get into some of the awesomeness in the book. We talk about mitochondrial health, um, lifestyle components, and also supplements that you can do to increase your mitochondrial health, which is basically your entire health. <laughs> Cause if the lights go out, everything goes out. Um, Sean and I both share a passion for plant medicines, psychedelic medicines. And so he talks about some of the things he's been onto lately about enhancing those experience with supplement stacks, which was super cool to nerd out on with Sean. Um, and then we get into, um, setting a life, creating a life of intention, love his words of wisdom there. He is living, walking proof of everything that he is teaching. Um, you know, if you didn't hear before, he has dealt with a lot of health issues himself, which really pushed him into becoming so knowledgeable about all of these things. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get in to the episode. Here is Sean Wells. Okay. Before we jump into the show, I've got a special announcement real quick, and it is about my higher retreats. We are finally rolling on this. This is a project that's been in the work for two years for me, and we are finally going. Our first higher retreat is going to be in April in Zion's National Park. I don't know if you've ever been to Zion, but oh man, it's in Southern Utah. It is incredible. Check out my Instagram for pictures if you haven't seen. It is just like one of the most magical places in the world. People come from all over the world to see this place. Um, So we are going to be doing it there April 21st through 24th, 2022. And I wanted to let you guys know we are still in our early bird pricing right now. Um, We sold a lot of it. We filled more than half the retreat in our pre-sale, but we still have one shared room left. So if you want to come with somebody and save some money, jump on that. Um, I am doing this with Be The Wellness. They are helping me put on this retreat. Be The Wellness is amazing. They are like my dream end goal of all retreats. And they have decided to help other people like me put on retreats. So it's going to be phenomenal. They're award-winning retreat um, hosts. And yeah, it's it's going to be good. So you have to go to their website. It's going to be Be The Wellness. So B-E-E. Make sure you follow them on Instagram, by the way, also. But B-E-E, The Wellness. Be the wellness.com slash experiences slash hire. All of the details are there. You have pricing. Um, you can register right there on the website. All of the schedule, all of the people who are coming. We have a shaman coming to do a fire ceremony the first night. There's an amazing yoga, meditation, breathwork facilitator. Catherine Dixon, who is like, I don't know what to call her, my like spiritual guide in life. <laughs> um, she is facilitates the work of Byron Katie and she has an episode here on Inside Out Health. I would highly suggest listening to that. She is a life changer. She's going to be facilitating um, two days at the retreat. So I'm so excited to have Catherine coming. She's like my secret weapon. She's amazing. So 
Um, yeah, all the details are on that website. Go check it out. Take advantage of the early bird pricing we have going um, for the next uh, week and a half. So that will end on, I guess, maybe it's a little less than that by the time you hear this. That ends on August 8th at 8 p.m. So 888, okay? August 8th at 8 p.m. Mountain Time is when the early bird pricing ends. So if you want to get in on that, get in on that now. Um, and yeah, if this is something that's pinging, if you feel like you need a reset, connect to nature, connect with like-minded people, take a look inside at what you got going on and leave with some tools on how to control your stress response and challenge your stressful thoughts and find out what might be going on inside of you that you're just not seeing. This is going to be amazing. We have a private chef coming, all gourmet paleo meals. It's going to be incredible. So um, yeah, check that out. Bethewellness.com slash experiences slash hire. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test. There's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of, exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios, right? So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. All right, guys, I've got Sean Wells back on the show. This has been a little bit of time coming. Hopefully you guys heard our first episode together. We got real on that one. Remember Sean? That was, that was a great episode. Yeah, it was beautiful. Um, and today we're going to be talking about his new ish book. <laughs> we had to reschedule this podcast a few times, but it's still, it's still pretty new. We got the energy yeah. formula and I am so glad. Look at this sucker. If you guys are on YouTube, it's, it's thick. It's awesome. It's so informative. Um, and I'm glad that you put your mind in onto paper because for me, you know, Sean, like you're the guy that I go to when I have like, I'm like, okay, like, just tell me how it is. What are your thoughts on this? You know, you, you are like my reference because it's not just, you're not just preaching theory. You've practiced pl cl clinical nutrition. You were the chief scientific officer for BioTrust. Like you've been in the supplement game. You've been in the nutrition game. You've got that, um, sports nutrition background with biochemistry, with clinical nutrition. I mean, it's such an amazing combo. And that's, that's what it says on the front of the book, guys, the secrets, only a biochemist dietitian and certified sports nutrition could know. So we're going to dive into the book today. And I picked out some parts that I thought would be super interesting for you guys to pick Sean's genius brain about. And I wanted to start with mitochondria and mitochondrial health, because it's a bit of a buzz right now, but I don't know anybody who's as passionate about mitochondrial health as you uh, from the moment I met you. It's like, it's that thing that comes up in conversation all the time. You know, you're super passionate about it. You're like, it all goes back to the mitochondria. So let's dive in. Why should people be thinking about their mitochondrial health? You know, they got a million things going on. Why do they need to be thinking about their mitochondria? I, I truly believe that mito is the next keto and that when it comes to like, what's more important if we're talking vitality than cellular energy and cellular energy and the energy for life, the energy for vibrance, the energy to run your systems is coming from the mitochondria, the cellular powerhouse of the cell, right? So 
It creates ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy currency used throughout the body. And we need our mitochondria. When we're mitochondrial dysfunctional and we're, we essentially run into metabolic dysfunction. And yeah. then we're in a state of insufficient cellular energy, ice. And we're, there's a shortfall of energy. And as a result, it's kind of like trying to fix the car as it's running full steam down the road. And, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's true dysfunction that will be kicking off damage in the form of one lack of energy, hypertonicity of muscles, brain fog, glycation, which is blood sugar damage, oxidation, inflammation, all of these things will be happening when there's that shortfall of energy and you're still trying to like hit the gas. Yeah. We're hitting the caffeine, we're, you know, having the alcohol, we're like, you know, watching internet porn, cranking up the music, like whatever it is, like we're trying to like, you know, bridge that gap in the brain. It's actually called brain energy gap. It's the same idea. And it's been shown in the brain that like the, the neurons uh, are actually firing slower across the synapse. Like there's, that's why like when we wake up and we're exhausted, the first thing we're reaching for to try and bridge that energy gap to get those neurons firing faster so that we don't feel that brain fog is caffeine, is sugar. Like that's why we're craving those things to get going instead of getting better sleep. Um, so definitely mitochondrial health uh, is a massive discussion. Um, biological aging versus chronological aging. Nearly all disease is related to metabolic dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction. Like maybe 1% of disease is actually genetic from birth, you know, like the, a, a disease you're born with, let's say, but almost mm -hmm. all other diseases are metabolic in nature, not just cancer, but cancer, coronary heart disease, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, PCOS. I mean, all these things that we're seeing that, you know, a ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, um, mitochondrial health supplements are all helping with things like berberine metformin are all helping with. It's lowering the rate of all disease, lowering the rate of biological aging versus chronological aging. Yeah. Let's talk about what we can do to enhance our mitochondrial health first from a lifestyle perspective, but then let's definitely hit on berberine and metformin and other supplements that you recommend to enhance mitochondrial health. But first lifestyle, what are the biggest hitters in your opinion on mitochondrial health, enhancing it? First and foremost would be, would be sleep to me like that, uh, you know, I, I have a good friend. I don't know if you've had her on the show, Molly McLaughlin sleep is a skill. She's amazing. I haven't, uh, but I'd love to sleeping biohacker. Uh, but sleep is one of those. We're the only species that denies ourselves sleep when we need it. Yeah. It doesn't make sense what we're doing. And then the amount of blue light exposure we're having, I'm sure you've talked about that plenty, but like, if you think about it, it's not just even some blue light exposure, our TVs over the last 30 years have gone from 25 inches to 50 inches to 75 inches to 90 inches. <laughs> mm. And now we're doing like VR glasses, like on our face, like blasting full light on our face. Then we're, you know, we have these brighter and brighter phones. Everything's going from like, you know, four 480p to 720p to 1080p to 4k to, you know, and it's like, and it's HDR and it's like, everything's about greater brightness, you know, more pop and more colors. And it's cool. Like, you know, these devices look cool and they definitely pull you in with the saturation and the color and the brightness and the massive screens. But think about what this is doing to us. It's like, we're literally, you know, experiencing like the brightest day, you know, of sunshine at night, at eight, yeah. nine, 10 o'clock at night. Plus it's sports with a lot of intensity. It's game of Thrones with a lot of intensity. It's right. you know, movies that are adult themed, right. With like sex and violence and, you know, winding you up or news, everything's like late at night, right. Hyping you up, dopaminergic kind of stuff. And like mm -hmm. you're in, in trained to it. And then you're distracted and you're on your phone as well. And you're on multiple devices with multiple screens. So we're not in a state of winding down. We're not in a state of being able to disconnect from devices and all this blue light. 
we're really like wiring ourselves up, winding ourselves up. And then we wonder why we have to use alcohol and Ambien and, you know, and it's, and it's so hard to get to sleep. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Not to mention you didn't give yourself any time to process everything that happened that day. So by the time you lay down, you're processing that stressful conversation at work or your relationship issues or whatever. And now your mind's still going and we wonder why we can't sleep. And I think a lot of the reason we tend to, I want to just scroll on my phone. I want to just watch this because we want to avoid that. Suppressing but all it. we're doing is delaying it and disrupting yeah. our sleep with it even more. And I, th- I, I, I love that you said sleep first. I was just talking to a woman from Colombia the other day. And I was saying how, when I lived in Spain, I was like, they really do like take a break in the middle of the day and like go home and eat and the stores close down. And they, they sometimes nap. They really do this siesta thing. She's like, oh yeah, my country too. She's like, it was so weird for me when I came here that you guys don't do that, you know, and I look at animals, I like to look at nature as an example. And I'm like, animals nap throughout the day, you know, but we're like, no, I will drug myself to make sure that I don't do what my body is naturally wanting to do. (laughs) Yeah. Ignoring your body. I was just reading a really interesting article about senses that yes, there's the, the five senses and yes, there's like extrasensory perception, like externally, you know, into the world, but it, it was also talking about like these internal senses, all the receptors we have in our body that we sense temperature, we sense, you know, organs and our metabolism and, and, you know, whether our stomach is full and, you know, all these different senses of what's going on in our body. And it never really gets talked about all these things that we can sense in ourselves if we're tuned into it. Right. So that's a, it's a great point that, Love we're, that. we're suppressing all of this uh, so much of the time. I love that point about being able to wind down and, you know, going into, uh, gratitude journaling, or yeah. you know, you know, doing meditation or processing at the end of the day. I think that's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal point. I know that, you know, for me, that would happen all the time with like, when I, you know, working 80 to hundred hours a week, like my, you know, I get into to the dark room and then my mind goes haywire with right. like monkey mind stuff. And, <laughs> and, uh, and absolutely like I had to drug myself to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, you know, a lot of people I know love to do visualizations of how the next day is going to go. And I've noticed like my, my morning routine came in place way before my nighttime routine came in place. And it wasn't until I got the nighttime routine down that everything started to flow. And for me, that was earlier. I need to start this nighttime routine earlier. Like you said, like you <laughs> waiting till 10, 11 o'clock at night. Okay. Hurry body, like shut down now. It's not, it doesn't work like that. You know, it's just like warming up for a workout. You don't go from zero to like sprinting at full capacity. You know, you got to warm up a little. And I, I, I love that some people will do, um, like visualizations of how the next day is going. And for me, one thing that I do, and I've noticed it's just these little tricks from my mind. I'll lay out my workout clothes at night. And mm-hmm. it's just this little symbol to myself of like, yay, I can't wait to go to sleep so I can wake up and do this tomorrow. You know? So that is some sort of routine is super, super helpful. Um, okay. Let's get nerdy for a second. Let's talk, okay. uh, mitochondrial supplements. You hit on berberine and metformin. Can you explain what those are first of all, and then any other supplements you love for mitochondrial health? I, yeah, I can. And by the way, if, I, if you're seeing this on video and I'm looking very red, it's because of niacin and we're <laughs> talk about that as it relates to in just a second. So, uh, metformin is the drug that people have known about since the 1920s. Interesting, interesting data. Originally it was used for influenza hmm. and it's antiviral. Wow. Didn't know that. Good to know. I'll just leave <laughs> that there. But maybe some of these other compounds could help with our current dilemmas. Um, it's something that needs to be explored for sure. Um, but Metformin is the most popular glucose disposal agent, uh, works by AMPK, AMP kinase, um, and it's super effective at lowering blood sugar, increasing ketones, enhancing insulin sensitivity. We've definitely seen data that lowering insulin chronically over a lifetime can lead to, you know, elevated growth hormone, uh, telomeres staying longer, uh, rapamycin, um, you know, being more ideal, all these kinds of things that are associated with anti-aging when insulin is lower, uh, you have a uh, slower, essentially biological aging and less disease. So we've seen that correlation that insulin is higher, then we have faster biological aging, 
more disease and more metabolic dysfunction. So we're meant to be metabolically flexible. And we're in a state right now where we're just too sedentary. We're eating too often, too high glycemic carbohydrate, too many calories, too much stress, not enough sleep. I mean, to all the points we were just making, it's those are the differences um, than what used to be. And right. no, I don't think everyone needs to be keto. Um, you know, if you look at all these other cultures, like that's the difference. They do sleep. They are highly active. They have complex carbohydrates. They do uh, relax and connect with each other and they have de-stressing techniques and, you know, and they're not overeating all of them. They're not overeating. Right. They, they're they, walking they fast, you know, <laughs> right. like they, you know, they fast all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's so different. And I do think keto is effective given a lot of what's going on with our metabolic dysfunction. Right. So, you know, like, you know, someone in Africa doesn't need to eat keto, but someone in America that's highly overweight and metabolically dysfunctional, it makes sense to me. So yeah, that's hundred percent agree. Difference. Yeah. Uh, so berberine is the herbal equivalent essentially of metformin, very similar. And by the way, metformin is in a study right now with over 10,000 people. Nice. It's a massive study on yeah. anti-aging. So cool. it's, it's been, it's been looked at for over 20 years in anti-aging not just with, obviously, if you're diabetic, like type two diabetic, it's going to be very potent um, in anti-aging and improving your health. But they've even shown with people that are highly insulin sensitive and are far from diabetic, a uh, normal glycemic, that they benefit from the anti-aging effects as well. And it's one of those things that like, you almost can't get too low in hemoglobin A1C or can't get too low in CRP. Like, these are things like that just, they're just massively anti-aging, no matter how like low you get them. So and real quick, can you explain what those are? Uh, yeah. Um, hemoglobin A1C is a longer term indicator of blood glucose, uh, blood sugar. Um, and CRP is an indicator of inflammation in the body C-reactive protein. Um, scientists might look at some other things that aren't as easy to to snapshot like IL-6 and some of these other compounds, but that's like the easy one for just, you know, when you go get blood work at Quest or whatever to look mm -hmm. at CRP, hemoglobin A1C. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So berberine. Uh, okay. Going yeah, so, so berberine actually outperforms metformin head to head in a study. Um, so the herbal equivalent is actually more potent. Plus uh, metformin has been shown to lower B12 it was actually pulled off mm. the market last year for being tainted. And about a third of people have GI distress from mm. metformin. Okay. But what we see like berberine again is superior and even more interesting is dihydroberberine, um, mm. which berberine converts into dihydroberberine in the gut. Mm. And it's about five times more bioavailable as a result. And berberine and metformin do have bioavailability issues. That's kind of why the GI distress thing happens. Mm. Uh, and okay, cool. it's in its active form as dihydroberberine, and it lasts about twice as long in the, in the blood plasma. So you have Very to take cool. much lower doses and you take it less frequently if you take dihydroberberine and you don't have the GI distress. So let's say somebody's used to a 500 milligram dosage of berberine, which would be typical. What would the dosaging be for the dihydroberberine? A hundred to 150 milligrams twice a day. Wow. So Is that less. easy to find? Yeah. It's under the brand name Gluco Vantage. Okay. Thanks. I'm all taking notes over here. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> and so like that's Blood sugar is absolutely massive. Modulating insulin, um, modulating inflammation is going to be important. I like things like uh, curcumin um, in a liposomal form. Potentially, there's another form called curcumin that's good, and then there's a metabolite called tetrahydrocurcumin that's very effective as well. I like pairing up these curcumin curcumin compounds with CBD um, cannabidiol. So nice. like those are all really effective at modulating inflammation. So again, go yeah, for that to lower that CRP, correct? Yep, exactly. So we're lowering hemoglobin A1C, we're lowering inflammation. 
and then getting to enhancing mitochondrial function, um, that's where like improving CoQ10 and PQQ would be ideal. Those are uh, both involved in the electron transport chain of the, of the, Cre of the yeah, the Krebs cycle um, and ATP I'm production. Gonna interrupt real quick. If you're hearing all this and you're like driving and you wanna fr frantically write notes, this is all in his book, okay? This yeah. is CoQ10, so just get the energy yeah. formula <laughs> if you want a, an easy reference for this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so PQQ, CoQ10, um, those are going to help with mitochondrial health, but boosting NAD, which is a big topic right now, how do you boost NAD yeah. and, and NAD and NADH is, um, involved the kind of the, one of the last stops in the citric acid cycle, the, the Krebs cycle, and you want to skew this ratio towards NAD. And it's, that's kind of what we've found to be like most anti-aging. Um, if you can boost NAD that, uh, again, telomere length is longer that, um, you know, mitochondrial function is higher, that there's less DNA errors as a result, um, like DNA methylation involves a lot of, uh, of NAD. Yeah. And just uh, in case alcohol, you're... by the way, and like alcohol and bad eating and bad, not enough sleep all lower NAD, mm. like overuse of alcohol, I should say. Um, real quick translation. If you're not a super biohacker nerd yet. So telomeres would be like the little, well, I'll let you explain it. The little end caps of our DNA. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you think of like, um, DNA is like the shoelaces and yeah, exactly. Like the little caps on the shoelaces are yeah. Telomeres. So, and the longer, the better. And the as they get the better. Right. Yeah. And so you're saying this can help, you know, we want to make sure that our NAD levels are not plummeting, which is typical as we age, right? That's what causes like, yeah. Like so so yeah, a double whammy is that we make less NAD as we age. Um, then we also uh, have higher levels of NADAs that breaks down NAD. It's also called CD38. Hmm. So we're making less, we're metabolizing it faster. And then all these bad habits are plummeting the NAD as well, like the, the drinking, the not getting enough sleep, the bad diet, the not hydrating, the overstress, all lower NAD. So it's like quintuple whammy of all this stuff, like we're lowering NAD levels. So how do we raise NAD? Obviously, one way would be IV NAD. That's not, it's not cheap. No. <laughs> many hours and it can feel a little uncomfortable. You do get this paresthesis that I have going on right now. <laughs> where it looks like I have a sunburn and I'm like, my skin is tingling. And, You're such a biohacker. <laughs> um, you know, that can, that can happen at paresthesis. So yeah, what were you going to say? Um, also the niacin. Let's talk about why you're red. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm getting there. So that um, NAD itself doesn't get absorbed very well um, in terms of bioavailability orally. So there are some supplements that people are taking, NR, nicotinamide riboside, also called true niogen, and NMN, um, the nicotinamide mononucleotide. Um, those are both niacin-ish compounds that uh, occur in this NAD pathway. But the data, I would say the data is slightly better on NMN if I was going to take an oral supplement than NR. Um, especially if you look at like David Sinclair's work, he's done a lot there and Rhonda Patrick, Peter Atia, they're all on kind of the NMN train. Mm -hmm. um, so I do take NMN, but really interesting information I've been reading and why I'm doing this mm -hmm. is that just niacin itself and that has to be the full flush niacin. So nicotinamide, uh, nicotinic acid, um, sorry, that nicotinic, nicotinic acid. Yeah that you want to get that form because that full flush, um, one is enhancing uh, blood flow, which is why I have this, uh, you know, look that I have right now. You do get the sunburn, the paresthesis. Uh, it does seem to affect um, lipids more, um, improving um, dyslipidemia and again, improving inflammation. But the most interesting thing in this study, 500 milligrams twice a day, it improved NAD levels eight times in healthy humans. Whoa. Yeah. So now I'm on this niacin train. Even more interesting is there's a pathway 
but it's very similar to the way this one peptide 5-amino-1-MQ works, uh, where it could be um, really improving fat loss and preventing um, fat synthesis. So like really interesting that niacin in high dose, the full flush niacin could be potent at enhancing your energy levels, lowering body fat, uh, improving dyslipidemia, lowering inflammation. It really is a miracle compound. You just have to suffer through this paresthesis a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah. Some of you may have experienced that in like a pre-workout and you're like, why am I sweating and hot and <laughs> tingling? And yeah, that's, that's what, the what I would say is that you can take like a hundred milligrams of the full flush niacin and then just start working your way up then take yeah. two and then three. And then you can, they do make 500 milligram caps, which is what I'm using, but you know, wow. just up to it. You know, I'm going to be ordering some after this now. <laughs> um, super cheap. That's the fun thing too. Yeah, super it's cheap. awesome. And by the way, guys, now you can probably see why in the beginning of the episode, I was like, I am so glad that you put your brain down on paper, right? Because <laughs> this is how I feel after every conversation with Sean is like, crap dude, hold on. Let me put some notes in my phone real quick. But it's, it's uh, he, this book it's it's really cool too. Cause I, one thing I love that you did in the book, I'm just going to, I'm going to plug your book for a minute. Cause it is really cool. He has this, um, what do you call it? Like the science corner scientists, uh, formulators corner, formulators the- corner. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. So it's like a quick reference of all of this stuff and it's beautiful. The book has color on the pages. I mean, it's a super nice resource. Okay. We're all right, sh- wait, I got, I got one big one for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is going to blow your mind. In okay. <laughs> Simulating exercise, exercise mm. in a bottle, an ingredient that's an exercise mimetic is the actual class. Mm. Um, there's been some compounds that have been drugs in this exercise mimetic class, ACAR, A-I-C-A-R, another one called GW50156, I believe is the, the numbers. Uh, those were both exercise mimetics, literally exercise in a bottle. But there is a compound that occurs naturally in your body, a peptide called beta, beta amino isobutyric acid. And mm. when you're intensely exercising, you're breaking down some of your muscle uh, in like the BCAA pool in your muscle. Um, and valine, one of the BCAAs, converts into L beta. And L-beba um, is the signal to your body that we're intensely exercising. And as a result, L-beba being uh, elevated is associated with increased neuroplasticity in the brain, increased VO2 max, decreased fat mass, improved muscle mass, improved strength, improved bone mineral density. Like you can just go down the line of all the things that are associated with intense exercise are associated with L-beba. This so is biohacking to the max. <laughs> yeah. Enhancing, enhancing L-beba levels is essentially getting more out of every rep, every step. I don't like the idea of like the exercise in a bottle and you just sit on the couch. Like right. something I wouldn't recommend, but I think it's the kind of thing where if you do eight reps, it's like doing 12. You know, if you do a hundred meter sprint, it's like doing 130, you know, it's like that kind of thing, like where you're you're getting faster results. Wow. That is fascinating. Have you tried it? Yeah, I have it. I I mean, I have like the patents around some of this stuff. Okay. (laughs) Awesome. Wow. Very. Yeah. 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 It's on the market. It's called mito burn. Um, it Mm. does, uh, also affect, um, the browning of adipose tissue. So in mitochondrial function and anti-aging. Yeah. I'm just over here making my little shopping list, (laughs) El Beba. And then the name is like fun to say too. (laughs) That is awesome. Wow. Thanks for sharing that one. All right. I have have another new one. That's really interesting. Uh, Dilucine. So leucine has always been uh, going back to the BCAAs, the the gold Mm -hmm. standard in muscle protein synthesis. It's the signal uh, in your body to turn on that that anabolism to make more muscle, to recover more muscle, right? Um, So that's one thing that's important if you're trying to gain muscle mass or maintain muscle mass, especially as you age, like we tend to be sarcopenic and lose muscle mass as we age, lose strength and functionality. Super important to maintain your muscle mass and strength as you age. So leucine, key, but 
how do you essentially like it's not the dose of leucine what happens in the plasma it's how quickly leucine goes up in the plasma that the body senses to turn on muscle protein synthesis so it's not really about absolute dose it's about how quickly it can go up mm. and what we've seen is that you know people that have more optimal testosterone and improved insulin sensitivity it tends to go up faster. So for people that have mm. low androgen levels or poor insulin sensitivity, it tends to take much longer mm. and therefore it takes much higher doses of protein or leucine to trigger muscle protein synthesis. And that's mm. where you get sarcopenic obesity where you're, you're like tend to be you know, gaining fat and losing muscle over time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there is an interesting hack here and it was something i explored is that singlet meaning like single amino acids are actually slower in the uptake than these di and tripeptide transporters hmm. there's unique transporters in the uh, jejunum that like pull up uh these dipeptides and tripeptides faster hmm. so it seems counterintuitive but dilucine is two leucines put together. And we've done research on this, that it's about 40% better than singlet, uh, singlet wow. amino acid leucine. So you can lower the doses, you can have it be much more potent at turning on that, that system for anabolism. Whoa, I love how your mind thinks, Sean. This is awesome. I, like every biohacking nerd right now is like making a list. I'm like dilucing, oh baby. Okay, got it. <laughs> um, dang, that's awesome. Okay, before I move on, because I want to talk about the plant medicine supplement oh, yeah. stuff, but is there anything else exciting that you've had come out before we get to that? Or that you're working well, on? I do have, you know, T Cream and Dynamine are my energy ingredients. They're in about 700 products. They're amazing. I do, and I still love them and use them. I do have another energy ingredient coming out uh, that is a metabolite of caffeine. Um, mm -hmm. That caffeine has issues with fast and slow metabolizers. So, for about yeah. a third of the population, people metabolize it quickly and they're the people I can just go right to bed and, you know, it doesn't really do anything for me. And then a third of the population, it's ideal the way it works. They get the right amount of stimulation. Mm -hmm. And then a third are slow metabolizers where they get the, the hangovers and the headaches and the uh, arrhythmia and, and it just seems to hang around forever and slowly gets metabolized. Yeah. So the thing that it metabolizes into is an ingredient called paraxanthine. And paraxanthine is where you're getting the benefit. This is like the thing mm. that enhances your energy. What's interesting too, is it's much lower in toxicity than caffeine. It doesn't have that metabolizer issue. It doesn't have the habituation mm. where your body becomes dependent on it. Uh, it doesn't have the wow. adaptation effect where you need to take more and more caffeine to get it to be as effective. Wow. Um, and, and it, what's really interesting too, is it has a much more potent dopaminergic effect. That's actually neuroprotective and enhances like mood and well-being feelings. You get like a confidence or swagger on it. Right. So this is an ingredient that, um, we're releasing in the, in the coming months and maybe it'll be out by the time the show goes live. So I don't have a brand name for this ingredient quite yet. But, Do you have a name uh, for the ingredient? Did you say, can you say? Paraxanthine is the ingredient. Okay. We have about 20 patents filed on it. Um, yeah, wow. And it's it's going to be coming out in, in many new products, but it's it's really exciting. Like it yeah. works, it works for everyone. Like it's wow. not like caffeine where it kind of works here and there and you know, side effects. Right. It's super clean, works for everyone. People feel this confidence and swagger. They feel happy on it. They go to wow. sleep great. You know, it's just one of those things is just optimizing you. So like the, the parties we've had that have, uh, you know, been trying it, looking into it, companies that are just super excited about it. It's so, it's so fun to see what you create because it's not like, <laughs> you know, some people are like formulators, but they're like, this has ginseng in it. Cause ginseng is good for you. Like you're thinking about this on a way deeper biochemical level. And it's, it's cool to see how you're thinking like, huh, how could we offset 
that problem, but still get these benefits. Like it, yeah, it's and, super rad. Thank you. And like, and two of the other ingredients that caffeine turns into is theobromine, which I really don't think is that effective. And then theophylline, which is side effect ridden too. That's like a bronchodilator similar to like an ephedrine or DMAA. It's kind of a dirty stem. And there's just tons of side effects and toxicity with that. So like going straight to this paraxanthine is like, is why it's so clean, has like basically no side effects and people feel amazing on it. So yeah, I'm super excited. About yeah, it. I cannot and wait I to use it every that. day. Yeah, I bet. I w- <laughs> I'm sure I won't be addicted to it at all. <laughs> I'm like, wait, when to message me when it's available. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk plant medicines because you and I yeah. both have a similar passion for the incredible, mind-blowing, transformational potential of plant medicines. And I can't wait to get in your mind to see where your mind has gone of how we can stack supplements to enhance those experiences. And I'm thinking based off our pre-convo before we started, that's where you're at. So can you share where your mind has gone with that? Yeah, I think most people are talking about magnesium, 5-HTP and electrolytes, and that's about the extent of it. Right. Um, I've been going much deeper with it. So you know, one of the things I'm looking at is BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, basically the neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. Michael Pollan talks about, it's a great analogy that, you know, we have our ski tracks and over time we just go into our ski tracks and that's what we keep doing. The neurons that fire together, wire together, right? So that we get in our habits and and that's kind of um, crystallized intelligence works that way, where we just get in our box, right? Right. We, as we age, we get smarter by getting in our box, this crystallized intelligence, but we lose fluid intelligence. Like we're yeah. not as, we're not as um, dynamic right? Um, at taking on new tasks. And, and that's the whole idea of neuroplasticity. And that's mm-hmm. why it's good to challenge yourself by, you know, learning new languages and going to new restaurants and putting your belt on the opposite way and brushing your teeth with the opposite hand or yeah. You know, like going to an art museum or, you know, being around friends that, you know, if you're anti-vax that are vax that, mm-hmm. you know, someone that's, if you're Trump and that they're Biden, like right. being around, like diff, like challenging your brain is right. healthy. Right. Okay? So yeah. that's super important for neuroplasticity as we age to not get trapped in our box. Yeah. But I found a compound it's actually more effective. I mean, people talk about like Stamets protocol, lion's mane, enhancing BDNF, (laughs) (laughs) nothing, nothing compared to this compound. I found a compound that enhances BDNF more than injecting BDNF. Whoa. Okay. Let's hear it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's called 7,8-dihydroxyflavone and it enhances neuroplasticity. I, one thing I would be careful of is not always using something that enhances neuroplasticity. Because if you think about when you're young, you get traumatized very easy. Things uh, mm, like suicidal feelings, depression, like we feel more, right? Mm, yeah. So we're, we're, it's things are more intense. So I would be careful like to use these compounds yeah. Like when you're in a safe environment, when you're in a positive learning environment, when you're happy, like, and probably times. experienced, like you're yeah. pretty experienced with plant medicines already. Like, because, you yeah. know, from what we've seen from mushrooms, for example, which is my favorite plant medicine, it's, it's already, it already enhances neuroplasticity. So like start there in a safe environment with a trusted yeah. person who knows what they're doing. Right. And then maybe down the road, if everything is going well, you could trickle into this state. That's a really great point though, about like, Hey, be careful. Cause you're going to feel your feelings in this state, you know, and you might not want to overwhelm yourself out of the well, game. That's why it's important to have a really good facilitator in the whole yeah. set and setting. And like, yes. because you can actually hardwire in traumas. Yes. In hundred percent. And, and I had one uh, really horrible scenario where I was very traumatized in plant medicine. Mm. Um, but 99.9% of my stuff that I've done has been amazing with the right facilitators and it's, and it's led to massive changes and 
just yeah. I 10 X my life. So yeah. I'm yeah. all for it, but it's also important to be careful. Yes. But Thank you. The, uh, seven, eight dihydroxyflavone. My idea there is that you use that in the days and weeks following your plant medicine journey. Interesting. So okay. that you can, um, integrate in further and deeper. You can, very cool. you can like yeah. when you're working through, especially if you're someone that's journaling and working on, you know, what you, uh, went through during your journey, then you can leave yourself more room to make those changes and hardwire in these positive thoughts to, mm -hmm. to hardwire in the, the inner truth or the, you know, the higher self. Yeah. Cause you know, a lot of us will talk about the post mushroom glow, right? So like yeah. especially the first day after, and then maybe the next a little bit, it starts to trickle, but you are very, you can almost tell that you're neuroplastic. You're super open. You're thinking yeah. about things on a deeper level. You feel connected to everyone around you, like little kids. You know, I've noticed, yeah. I've noticed after I have done journeys and I'm around my kids, I feel like I'm finally on their level. I'm like looking mm -hmm. them in the eye and paying attention to everything they're saying. And they're in the, I, they're already doing that all the time. They're connected you know, we're the ones that are kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm doing this other stuff. Like, what'd you say? Yeah. Okay, cool. You know, it's it, so to enhance that a little bit longer is really cool because that you're hundred percent, right. The integration is where all the magic happens. Otherwise it was just this crazy thing I experienced and back to my ski tracks. Um, are you saying seven, eight dihydroxy flavone? Is yes. that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. And where do you get this in dosages? Uh, I mean, there's just a few companies right now that have it. It's not like widely available, but yeah. some of these nootropic kind of okay. you know, the aging sites right now, like, right. Hopefully we can get more on the market soon, but, um, you know, that's what it's only a handful of companies right now. Okay. Um, another cool compound that I'm looking at is dihydromyrcetin. So this one has been studied for um, hangovers in particular, and really reducing the effect of a hangover. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly, we know about hydration and B vitamins, but there's a detoxification effect that is potent with this compound. And so I think it would be great with, you know, higher doses of mushrooms with MDMA, mm -hmm. with, you know, ayahuasca, some of these things. And certainly, mm -hmm. if you have a night drinking, you know, like right, right. times any of us, like just have a little too much. And, you know, um, especially if it's like wines or something that kind of leave you hangover -y, right, you know, right. That happens with people. So dihydromyrcetin um, is one to look at for that. Okay. My next one up uh, is serotonin. Now, if you're doing like uh, MDMA, MDA, sassafras, like you know, there's a, there's a big serotonin dump and to some degree, even with, with mushrooms, but mm -hmm. certainly with those compounds, um, yes, five HTP, that's cool. Uh, but there's some other compounds that are really interesting too, that you could pair with it. Um, I have been working with Zembrin, which is, um, a, a essentially an herbal SSRI. And mm -hmm. so it's going to, um, you know, enhance the, the serotonergic, uh, reuptake. So, you know, it's going to work similar to like some of these SSRI drugs, but it's, it's a compound that comes from Kana, which you've probably heard yeah. about. Um, so using the combination of 5-HTP and Zembrin, I believe, and then there's some other compounds that could help like vitamin D, saffron helps modulate serotonin hmm. um these are some of the things that i would stack like post journey to get you to bounce back faster i know like if i you know i've done um um ice cream cone which is like 2cb like mda mdma like these are so depleting on like yeah. serotonin that you can feel the highest highs and deeply connected and and then like especially if you're alone like the next x days like you mm -hmm. feel like kind of like the lowest mm -hmm. lows and it can mm -hmm. be rough yeah um so like getting serotonin to bounce back and come back online faster could be ideal what's your thoughts on i've always wondered this and I, you're the perfect person to ask like timing of when to take those serotonin rebuilders like do you have thoughts on that i it's something that i'm exploring more yeah i actually think like this this is super controversial. Um, that 
you know, they tell you not to take SSRIs going into these things. Mm -hmm. I actually think that taking them will enhance the effect that it could, it's hard to say, like, if you're someone that's like really prone to depression and has neurological, um, psychological issues, then work with your doctor. This is, this is, yeah, guys, we're going off the cuff here. Okay. You're getting the inside (laughs) loop. (laughs) Like this is not, we're not making recommendations. Yeah. I'm (laughs) saying for like, if you're someone that's in a healthy mental state, like actually like taking these like prophylactically, meaning like ahead of time, maybe in, and then also post journey, I believe could prevent the depletion. Like you're like, it's the idea of like loading on serotonin then depleting it and then reloading on it. Yeah. So like, you know, that, that the dump isn't quite as intense if you take it like prophylactically pre-journey. It's an interesting thought. Really interesting. You know, like a lot of people just blanket, it's one of those like blanket statements that's not really based on science. Like, oh, you know, like, you know, if you take an SSRI, you don't want to do blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You won't have an experience or whatever. That's cool. Like I, again, for people that have like, you know, depression issues that are working with a doctor that are on multiple medications, I get it. Yeah. But I like the idea for those of us that are, that are, um, you know, healthy mindset that are doing journeys, experimenting with this. That said, again, another caveat is there's something that's called serotonin syndrome, serotonin six syndrome, something called you do have to be careful with all this, like titrate, look at it, feel like what's right for your body, um, you know, this kind of thing. But I do believe if you're someone that tends to go way low, then you might want to look at doing some things to um, protect serotonin levels, enhance serotonin tonin levels pre-journey. Yeah. Yeah. And again, uh, liability Certainly release post-journey. statement. We are just <laughs> theoretically, we are not making any recommendations for anyone. We're just nerding out on what could be possible. Okay. No. <laughs> um, okay. We have a little bit more time. The last thing I really want to hit on with you before we close this out is you have a section in your book about growing your life with intention. Like, I mean, I would just love for you to share what this has looked like for you and like your biggest nuggets of word of wisdom, like why it's important to live a life of intention and how do we actually do that? You know, what would be the opposite of living a life of intention? And then what are, what are your thoughts on how someone can best start to make those changes in their life? It changes everything. Like it's literally like when you go into a journey, right? What is it you do? You set intention or like we were talking about, like with sleep, if I wake up, you talked about morning routine, the, the two things that successful people across the board have in common with um, uh, Tools of Titans, Tim Ferriss uh, wrote, was they have a dialed morning routine, and they have like a resilient mindset um, to where they, they view everything as like has um, potential opportunity, right? Yeah. yeah. And so all of that has, it's all like rooted in intention. Mm -hmm. And when you look at um, all these habits of like working out and, you know, getting into cold plunges or reading and, you know, or turning something into a positive or turning it into opportunity or making the most of your plant medicine journey or, you know, navigating relationships or whatever it is, it's all revolves around intention. And if I look at like these successful morning routines, if I wake up instead of, you know, and I wake up in the, you know, it's like chimes that are slowly coming in in the light, slowly getting brighter in the room. And then I wake up and I do some box breathing, you know, like, um, you know, six in six, hold six out, six, hold, do that like four times. Then I do some, you know, gratitude. I'm so thankful that I have a house, that I have a dog next to me, that I have a job, that I, you know, have a car, that I have food. And there's so many great relationships in my life. And and then I go into, um, you know, what my intentions are for the day and what I want to accomplish today. Then I do some stretching and grab a glass of water. How intentional is that? Like that's 10 minutes. And it would literally reshape your day instead of your day happening to you, instead of feeling exhausted and like reaching for the coffee and the donut and the whatever, 
this is so different. And if that's 10 minutes, think about how that looks like the rest of your day, the tone it sets for the rest of your day when you start with intentionality. You talked about having the gym bag, that's intentionality, right? Like it's all, it, it's so different than like letting life happen to you. It's essentially right. like the idea of victimization, right? Like right. when we're letting life happen to us, we're becoming the victim, we're becoming the passenger. Yeah. And yeah. then that's our narrative is that we are victims and all of this is happening to us instead of the idea that everything is happening for us. The universe is working for us if we just engage with it and live with intention. Yeah. And that was so beautifully said. And we are in the driver's seat. And if you're listening to this and the way he described that wake up sounds like, yeah, 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 yeah. And you're just going to go back to, you know, moseying out of your bed and fumbling to the coffee pot and checking your phone. I'm just telling you, I heard what Sean just described over and over and over by every successful person that I could get my freaking hands on and just, I wanted in their minds, how do they think, right? Cause to me, you want to be successful at something, find someone who's successful at that thing and see how they think. And as many nuances as you can get in that, how do they react when something doesn't go the right way? You know, how do they show up with their family? How do they, you know, all of these little nuances, that's what I kept hearing. I kept hearing, I meditate, I have a morning routine. I meditate, I have a morning routine. And so I was like, okay, I've heard this enough times. I would have to be an idiot to not implement it. And so I changed everything. I started waking up at four 30, I started meditating. And it was like every single time my brain wanted to go into old patterns of no, 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 no. You have a bunch of things to do. You can't, it was like, no, no, I am going to sit here. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. That's all I'm going to do. 10 minutes of meditation. I'm going to write some gratitude and I'm going to do some personal development and it changed my whole life. So I can witness that what Sean just described is hundred percent true. And you're so spot on, on you're either in the passenger seat. If you're not creating your life with intention and setting up, I'd say it's the way you start your day and usually end your day. All of us are going to have some crazy in the middle. You know, I do use a planner and I'm like, okay, you got a two hour chunk there. Get that project done right there. That's what's happening. Not I'm farting around on my phone or run into the store. Like there's more intention happening, but if you can start your day with that, some sort of planning too, and then end your day with gratitude, manifestation, breathing, processing, you know, slow your whole life. Like I, I would say your whole life can change in a matter of months. It is incredible how fast it can come. So thank you well, for sharing that, that. That's that mental shift of not being the victim and yeah. a mental shift of a resilient mindset that has like a capacity for higher allostatic load, which I talk about in the book. It's basically your stress bucket. Yeah. And if you have a bigger stress bucket, you're harder to kill. You're anti-fragile. You're more resilient. That means you're more resistant to viruses. You're more resistant to stress at work. You're more resistant to people being negative to you. You yeah. know, that's, that's the kind of thing that's important. But I, I love, uh, I love your, your intentionality. And one of the things I was going to mention is just, here's an example that you kind of touched on with productivity that I mentioned in the book is like Cal Newport's deep work. And it's also something that's really covered in uh, Tim Ferriss's four-hour work week is just having that blocked off time to be productive. You yeah. can have two hours and outdo someone in their eight hours of distracted work where they're looking at their cell phone, where they're checking yep. emails, looking at Facebook, Instagram, blah, you know, TikTok, whatever, and you are super distracted. It's called task switching. No one's a multitasker. It's a bullshit lie. We're all just task switching and it takes two, three, up to five minutes to switch back. And we're doing this all day long and it uses a lot of mental energy. Right. It's depleting to go back, <clears throat> back and forth, back and forth, right. back and forth, back and forth. And we're accomplishing next to nothing. Yep. And there's dopamine all day long and we're not productive, but we're busy and we're exhausted. And in this two hours, let's say from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., you could knock out more if it's undistracted and you're focused on a task in that time than someone's doing in their entire day. It is so it's true. If you have not done what he just described, I'm challenging you some little project you have. Maybe you have a dream. Maybe you're like, I'm going to make a landing page. And you got your little dream, but you're like, I don't know. I don't know how to do my landing page. I don't even know where to start. I don't know. Where to okay. Turn your phone off and promise yourself that for, for two hours, 
you will not get distracted. You cannot look at your phone. You cannot open the web browser or, or, or maybe, well, sometimes for me, it's on a word document, right? Like I have to write out these, you know, a uh, mindset coaching programs. And I'm like, uh, uh-uh, I'm not opening the browser. Um, my phone is off. It's an airplane mode. You're not, you're not going anywhere. You're not eating anything. You're here. You're right here. And it is crazy to see. I, I observed myself how many times my mind was like, Oh, squirrel. Oh, 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 like I would want to reach for my phone or open the web browser because some thought popped in my mind and I'm going to look it up and put it in this mindset program. It's like, no, you make a note and you can look that up later, right? You're not going to go down some rabbit hole right now. Like just stay here. And it would, I remember one time I had this one project that I was like, I need to hire somebody out to do that for me. And I was like, dang it. I actually, I need to be the one who does this. I thought it was going to take me, you know, I was going to pay somebody quite a bit of money to do this. I finished it in an hour without distraction, one hour. I was like, holy cow, Sarah. So yeah, this, and, and for me, um, meditation is what has given me the ability to do this. A lot of people think that I need Adderall. I need something to help me focus. I need to hop myself up on caffeine and put these headphones on and all Actually, if you will train your brain through meditation, at least for me, that has been so incredibly helpful on helping me stay in the space that I'm in without chasing squirrels, chasing these rabbit holes of the mind. It's like, come back, let it go. Thank you. I see you. I know. I know. I got to email so-and-so about that other thing. I know. Okay. Write it down on the cell phone. The cell phone conditioning (laughs) us. It's in training us to be distracted, have instant gratification to, you know, look at multiple things like throughout the day. Like, I mean, like I said, we're, we're talking to people and being on the cell phone, we're watching TV right. and being on the cell phone. We're distracted by this thing all day long. And it's in training us to do that all day long, opening, opening apps and multitasking on apps. And it's a lot that's happening there. And you're literally in training yourself for this dopamine hit. Yeah. And so it's so hard to get away from that. And you'll realize when you're meditating, or when you're doing this deep work, how addicted you are, because every yep. 60 seconds, you're going to be like, I want my phone. I need I know. my phone. But it's if you, addiction. it's so true. And if you, but if you start to get away from it, you realize how stressed out you've become. Um, my daughter just told me she's 15. She told me she, she wants a phone without internet. She's like, I don't want it because I got my, her phone just broke. Right. So she hasn't had a phone at all for the last like three or four days. She's like, I just finished this book that I've been trying to finish forever. And now I'm starting another one. And she's like, I realize I'm wasting so much time. I'm not even doing anything on there. I don't want it. I don't want it. You know? And it's, yeah, if you take a little break, you realize how much it's stressing for me. It's, it's stressing me out because my mind thinks I'm busy doing stuff. And I'm, I don't need to be doing any of that. I don't need to be checking my DMS every three seconds and responding to people. I can wait and do that later in a chunk, you know? So, and, and those are some good hacks too, is like, I keep my phone on do not disturb. I've uh, pretty much turned off almost all my notifications, like gone app by app. Me too. Uh, There's so many notifications that come up that every time you're just swiping those away, like you know, just turn those off, like maybe text messages. Okay. But like a lot, like almost every app on your phone has access to notifications, turn those off. Yes. Give yourself a break. I know like speaking of what happened to your daughter, I went to Iceland for a biohacking retreat and my phone like broke, like right at the beginning. And it was like one of the, and I couldn't get a new one. I was just, oh my gosh. And it was like the scariest thing, but I like ended up like really connecting and having just an incredible experience with nature, with the people. And like, wow. I was actually so thankful. I think it was a, a gift from God. It was an answer from the universe that like, you don't need your phone here. Wow. Yeah. And cause you, you're the fear comes in. Like, what if people need to reach me and I'm out of the country and what if I ugh, can't access my bank stuff or, you know, your mind just goes to all these fears and you learn you're like, everything will be okay. You will make it through this. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Sean, thank you so much for coming on again. And guys, you can go to the inner, sorry, it's just energyformula.com. Mm-hmm. Check out his book there. Mm-hmm. Sean is one of the best in the biz by far. I mean, we've got, you know, top 20 readers list from us say today, top books for 2021 from Forbes. Um, it's an Amazon bestseller. It is an incredible resource. Like I said, if you were listening and you're like, what, I can't possibly remember. It's all this stuff. It's, it's in here, you know, and be sure to follow Sean on social media. It's just Sean Wells. Um, it's S H A 
WN kind of mm-hmm. Sean Wells. And um, yeah, Sean, thank you so, so much for coming on and oh. sharing all your freaking encyclopedia brain with us today. Oh, thank <laughs> you. I love being on with you and I, uh, I can't wait to hang out with you somewhere sometime soon. I know, hopefully, Just please don't shut us down again. I miss my friends. <laughs> all <Okay>. right, <laughs> we'll wrap it up. Thanks, Sean. Yeah.